Hello, uh, and welcome to Progress Junior Golf with Live Sport Now and the England Golf Young Ambassadors. My name is Steve Jackson, and this is the property magnate, Ian Waterhouse. How many houses have you got, Ian? <laughs> I've got one house, <laughs> property magnate. I've got one house um, that just moved. So uh, I'm in a new office. Um, haven't had internet for a while, hence the reason why there would be a slight delay on the Progress Junior Golf Podcast. Apologies to everybody, but we are back now and we're going to be every single Wednesday uh, in the run-up to Christmas now, aren't we, Steve? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah, you've not had much much fun, have you, trying to sort out internet, internet connections with your house, have you? Nope, uh, I won't name our provider, uh, but... <laughs> I'm sure everybody has problems. Don't know. It's uh, sort of part of part and parcel of it, unfortunately. But we're back. I've got yes. internet. It's good internet. I'm happy, and I've got a nice little office to work from as well. So I'm even happier, Steve, and I'm happy to see your face as well for this podcast. Very, very looking forward to this one. Good. Right. Okay. Now this podcast is all about junior golf. It's about the next generation of golfers. It's about getting more boys and girls playing the game of golf. Now we are coming towards the end of the golf season, and that you. <laughs> means yes exactly well tears yes but also prizes as well because generally speaking that's when the prizes are handed out towards the end of the season and they tend to be done in a final um you know a grand final really uh but let's look in more detail at this because organizing a junior grand final can be a big deal because after all you know it's an opportunity to finish the season in style and you really need to get it right yeah. um now over the last month i've been delighted i've been working at three different grand finals and also another end of season competition two of those i've actually organized myself and ian of course you've you've worked at a number of different types of grand finals over yeah. the over the years big tournaments both juniors and adults as well so yeah. both of us have got a lot of experience about you know the things which work things which sometimes don't work but the key thing about this is is that try and make it a success and and this process really starts now doesn't it we are at the end of the season but to look at your grand final for the end of next season you need to get on it now don't you Ian? well i know working with a few obviously men's tours as you know steve um basically a lot of hard work is going into getting everything ready for the next year already and, and not just the grand finals but the regular season events as well so it may be november and same for me from a broadcasting side of things i i sort of switched all of my focus to 2024 now to be brutally honest with you from from a side i get to sort of november and you know it's unlikely something's going to randomly pop up that's a huge huge deal for me so um for me i've switched focus to 2024 i'm building out for that the tours are you will be as well for your um you know shy's junior tour and the things you're involved in as well because simple fact is steve you've got to get in early because we want the golf courses we want the tee times and the golf courses need to plan their year as well. And, um, you know, you see a lot of, I'm involved heavily in motorsport and the British Touring Car Championship, for example, tend to release their, they will release their 2025 timetable, believe it or not, their calendar in about May 2024, when their season just starts for 2024. So they're, they're always about 12 months ahead of the game. So um, not that you have to be quite that far ahead, but you do have to work six to eight, to eight nine, nine months ahead, don't you, Steve? Actually, you're spot on as well, even thinking not just next year, but the following year. So, for example, I've already organised some grand finals for next year, but there are two or three venues whereby I went to them and said, would you like to hold it? And they said yes. So I'm already thinking, OK, would you like to do it in 2025, you see? So so you have to think ahead, you know, if, if these are happy and willing and able to, to host your events, don't turn them away, you know, give them the opportunity to in, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. That. Now, look, before we get into this, Steve, let's just do our usual homework as well. This show, it's uh, well, it's a podcast, but it's all about you guys watching as well. So please do get in touch if you have a question or if you uh, at a club that's hosted a grand final want to tell us about your experience. We would love to hear from you. You can do that. We're live across Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch and LinkedIn. Best place, though, to make sure your comment is seen is to go over to YouTube. Uh, there's a link in the body of this broadcast. Take you straight through to uh, the live chat. Or you can just scan that QR code just above uh, Steve's head there. If you scan that, it'll take you through to uh, the Live Spot Now YouTube channel where this is live. Comment in that live chat and we can show it on screen as well. Uh, if we don't show it on screen, don't worry, we do check out all the comments afterwards as well. But we'd love to hear your experiences, uh, whether you're an organiser, whether you're a parent of a child who's played in one, or um, you're, you're a member of a club that's had to give up its tea times for a grand final, what you think of that. So please do get in touch. We can see the comments. This is an interactive show. So do get in touch with us if you have a question. We'd love to hear from you, Steve. Absolutely. 
Right, first things first, though, let's cover the, the latest junior golf news. Um, like we say, towards the end of the season, so some of the big events coming have been taking place over the last few weeks or so. Start with England then against Ireland. Uh, and uh, Under-16s international took place at Carlton House over in Ireland. England won the match 15-9. They actually won all three sessions. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we shouldn't really say that. Sorry. We're, Sorry, we're completely impartial here. But come on, let us have a win. We've just been beaten in the World Cup final. We're rubbish at cricket. So come on, let us have something. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, why not? Yeah, and South Africa weren't involved. So at least we, we, we did lose to them. So, so yes. Right. Uh, like I say, England did win all three sessions. But the score at the end doesn't give any indication of how the actual competition went on. Because as we remember with the Ryder Cup, on that final day, it got a little bit tense towards the, the you know early singles yeah. matches. Because although Europe in that particular event were, were ahead, there was always the opportunity the USA were going to come back. Well, like I say, Ireland were behind going into but the final day singles in this match. The first <laughs> seven matches, though, they actually only lost one of the first seven singles matches, Ireland. They won three of them. Uh, so, therefore, it was getting down to those last five matches. But credit to England, they managed to win four out of those last five matches and halve the other one. So, they eventually won 15-9. Um, quite a few names which were in both teams have been mentioned a lot on this podcast. So, we'll just go through them for you. The England team was Sadie Adams, Ben Bolton, Matilda Santilli, uh, Jack Swift, Annabelle Peaford, Cameron Mukherjee, Mia Ingham, Alex Bowes, Charlotte Norton, Charlie Rusbridge, Chloe Tabard, and Harry Cox. Irish, the Irish team was Olivia Castell Costello, Eva Monaghan, Kate Dillon, Vi uh, Finn Eager, um, Neem um, O'Grady, Gordon Sillett, Hannah Lee McNara, Charlie Smith, Molly Campbell, who I know very well, Adam Fahey, uh, Gemma McKeon, and John Dawes. So well done to all those players who played in that match. Steve, just before you move on, of those names that you've listed there, right, uh, make a note of them. Yes. And let's come back in five years' time and see how many have made it on tour I've got to talk of, because I bet it's going to be a lot. Uh, very, very, it's the same names at Chloe Tabar, Ben Bolton, it's the same, the Mukherjee's, it's the same names, isn't it, that we keep repeating over and over and over in a good way, in a really good way. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to see how these players perform because I've seen a number come through in, in my relatively short time broadcasting golf, the likes of Dan Brown and Marcus Armitage all making it on tour and going on to win as well. So um, yeah, and Richard Mansell, I know very well too. So uh, it's really nice to see the next crop coming through and, and I'm very excited to see how many of those names. And I must say as well, um, when it comes to competition, I, lo I love to ride a car. I love, comp you know me, I, lo I love that sort of match play format. Like for me, that's that's where it's where it's at in golf. Um, but I can handle losing to Ireland. I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I like Ireland and, and I don't mind losing to them. Just don't want to lose to the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad we won anyway. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, no, you're right. And and, and and it's great. At the end of the day, those those Irish players will be representing Europe, hopefully, in the years to come in the Ryder Cup. 100%. So there so will we'll be, be our teammates. As well, we'll definitely absolutely. be supporting them. Absolutely. And the Sol Home Cup as well, we have to say as well. If they go 100%. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, now, we've got a photo of the winners here. It was the RNA Student Tour Series took place in Ireland. Uh, it took place at Olgiata Golf Club, the two winners then. Boys winner was Miguel Orza uh, from Italy. He won the, uh, well, I'll come to that in a second. The girls winner was Katie Lanigan who, on the left-hand side there. She won by one shot from Sweden's uh, Casalo Zolato Zvazvar. The best British place was Darcy Harry, who finished tied third. But going back to that men's result then, um, so Miguel Orza beat uh, England's Ben Brooks in a playoff. Uh, the scores, uh, Miguel's scores were 70, 69, 70, so 209, the finish level, and then the playoff. Now, the interesting thing about this was is that they put down in the playoff the fact that he won on the 10th hole. Now, I hope it wasn't literally the 10th hole of the playoff. They had to go through 10 holes of a playoff. I I hope it was the first hole and they just played it on the 10th. But, um, but it, um, yeah, that's true. Uh, mind you, I've been involved in a few broadcasting. There's some heavyweight playoffs going on. I remember, um, uh, Sonny, then Sonny Del Forsums, I believe it was, did Sonny Del Forsums a few times and um, go into about seven or eight in the playoff. <laughs> it's yes. uh, thinking, oh, okay, well, and it, we'll we'll broadcast for an hour and then, you know, we wrapped up well, we've probably wrapped up in half an hour. No, uh, hour and a half, two hours later, we're still going. You know? Yes. Actually, talk, we, we are going to be talking about grand finals. I remember doing the Fowler Series grand final in the UAE last year uh, and that went to a second hole of the playoff. Fortunately, in the UAE, they had floodlights. 
So therefore, even when it got dark, it didn't matter. They can still play the playoff kind of thing. You see, so it's good. You can't do that in this country, or at least it's not quite so no. easy to do that in this country. So, no, no. Uh, I don't know. I, I, obviously, that was in Italy. I don't know whether they had floodlights in Italy or not. They might well have done if they had a ten-hole playoff. Who knows? So, anyway, um, World Junior Girls Team Championship. Then this took place. Uh, not exactly sure where it took place, but I think it was overseas, overseas somewhere. Won by Canada. Uh, they beat Korea. Um, so four rounds, three players, I think best two scores count on each of the day, only came down to one shot at the end of all those four rounds. So that sounds like a fantastic competition. Yeah. The winning team, Canada's winning team, Anna Hung, uh, Vanessa Zhang and Vanessa Borovillos. Uh, the best uh, individual was Denisa Vodkova from the Czech Republic, 72, 68, 66, and then 71. So really good scoring to win that competition. Yeah, well done, Canada. Absolutely. Right, just finally as well, and it started today, so we won't cover the results from this event today, but it's taken place. Grandfather Justin Rose, Tele Telegraph, Junior oh, yeah. Golf Championship, taking place over in Portugal. 54 holes, so there's 24 finalists. This 12 boys, 12 girls playing 18 holes on each of the days. And this is take place at Quinta de Lago. If you've been to Quinta de Lago, fantastic, no. fantastic golf venue. They play on the south course, which is the, which is probably the, um, the championship venue there. Um, defending champions, actually, uh, Sophia Fulbrook and Dylan Shaw Radford are both returning, so they've got the chance of retaining their titles. But hey, look, no, you mentioned earlier, as well, yeah. Yeah. you mentioned earlier about some of the under 16s. Well, how about the names who are involved in this? Yeah, this is like a who's who. Uh, Isla McDonald uh, O'Brien, yeah. Olivia Costello, Nelly Ong, Macy <laughs> Whittle, Freya Russell, Lila Bizet, uh, Charlotte Colley, Amelia Wan, Annabelle Peaford, Lila Rose Hunt, Tala Clark. That's just the girls. So yeah. not a bad little lot of the boys, Lucas Dennison, Jack Hempshaw, Connor Graham, Morton Bailey, Oliver Smith, Max Murray, Jake Wallace. I'll just come to him in a second. Edward Mason, Ben Bolton, who we mentioned a little yeah. earlier. And, and Ben is also actually in the Fowler Series Grand Final as well. So he's having a cracking time of it, playing some, some yeah. international golf. Uh, Philip Crone and Joshua Gardner. Now, I did mention the fact that it did start today. I just had a quick peek at the scores. Um, won't mention what the final scores were from today because obviously they've still got two rounds to go. But Jake Wallace, I just looked at his first two holes and he was three under par after two holes. Oh, God. <laughs> Doesn't he like starting there. slowly, isn't he? You know, yeah, so, well, we'll, uh, we'll know what his um, final score is by the time this goes out, of course. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so you never know. We, we might all have a 59 on our hands by the end of, you know, but... but who knows? I'm not going to say any more. That was his first two holes. So, I'm anyway, good. right, that wraps up the junior golf news then this week. So, we're going to be talking grand finals now. And uh, I think yeah. we'll probably, we'll probably almost do it on a before, during, and after kind of thing because obviously, this is the idea of this podcast is to try and give people advice about how you go through the process of organizing a junior grand final, the, the, the things that you need to do beforehand, the things that you need to do when the event is taking place, and also afterwards as well um like i say i've got experience of running different types of events and, and so so have you so um well let me ask you this then steve if, if that's the, and that makes sense you know it, it, like a good book isn't it there's a start there's a middle and, and an end so let me ask you because you've actually organized events i've just broadcast them i've been to a number of grand finals and and you know it's been great but i've never actually physically organized one as such so when you organize uh, a series shall we say uh, a number of competitions do you work backwards do you think right Here's 12 months of the year. I want my grand final to be in October or November or, you know, middle of October, let's say, for argument's sake. Then do you work back and think, right, this is how many tournaments I need. This is the qualifying criteria. Off you go. How do you do it? Yeah, pretty similar. You have to because you have to start with your final date because that, as we've mentioned, is your grand final. That's your date. You want to make sure that you get everything right on that date. So there's not a great deal of point in putting together a, a whole series of events if you don't have the actual yeah. venue or you don't have a date for the final because you know you'd just be scratching around trying to trying to and of course you've so got to yeah. get everything locked in haven't you beforehand because you can't announce it you can't get people to sign up to come play in your tournaments and uh and then release the grand final date later and they've won all the tournaments that then can't make the grand final because you didn't announce it until too late that's it <laughs> yeah. yeah of course the irony about that is as well you, when you're trying to organize a venue and you're saying right okay let's get this venue let's get this date that venue then turns around to you and says okay what's the what's the process to get to the final and you turn around and go i haven't actually got any venues booked yet you know that so you obviously have to have an idea in your head you, yeah. you need to you know you need to so say for example realistically as we well know, US Masters is generally the start of the golf season. So you know. No, no, that... no, Steve. 
Sunny Del Forson. Sunny Del Forson. Sorry, yes, sorry, yes, yes. <laughs> so, okay, so so late March is, is your start of your goal season, basically. So there's not a great deal of point in putting things on before then, because you know, realistically, it's not going to be a handicap qualifier, and you want your event to be handicap qualified more often than not. There are there are exceptions to that. There are tours, junior events in particular, whereby they don't have handicap qualifying events. For example, they play a full tees and age related. So that there are you know you don't have to go down that route if you if you if you don't want to. But you obviously have an idea. Yeah, let's start in March, April. Let's work our way through, and let's have a grand final, which may well be let's say late September. It could be the end of the summer holidays, late August. It could be in October, something like that. Uh, but then equally so, you don't really want to finish two or three days before your grand final because obviously so yeah. you need to set yourself a little bit of time to obviously organize that grand final so generally speaking i try and think start april finish you know late august mid-september and then with a view to having the grand final then perhaps two or three weeks after that um, well let's put this out there then steve people watching right now uh, particular parents as well um does that work for you? What do you find at a current structure? Do you like it? Do you like a big gap between events or do you like them to come in quick succession? We know, obviously, with Faldo series, they're limited to school holidays. So we know, obviously, you've got a busy period during the summer school holidays. Um, and then there's sort of six weeks in between events, isn't there, when they have, um, I know there's one normally starts in Easter, doesn't it? And then sort of one in the half terms and, and then that, it's almost five back to back to back, isn't it, over the course of the summer holidays? Um you are limited on times. You know, that's got to be, that's got to factor. I mean, the school holidays, certainly for junior golf tours, imagine the school holidays kind of dictate when you can run your events, really, unless you can somehow get lucky and do something on a weekend. But, I mean, good luck with that. <laughs> you know? And you also have to factor in who your players are. So who's who's going to be playing in your events? If, you're, if your events are targeted at, let's say, as the Faldo Series is, elite golfers, then there's no point whatsoever trying to put on a grand final or any of the events during the year which clashes with your, your English championship, the, you know, your r &A championship, your major championships, because you know, generally speaking, you don't want to give those kids whereby they go, well, which one do I play? You know, that you want them to play in both. Yeah. So therefore, you obviously have to schedule a bit. Now, the good thing about England golf is, and, and the other national bodies, and to a, to a lesser extent, but even so, more so, in, same as well, regional bodies as well, the county bodies, they put their fixed list out now. So yeah. you know now, right, that's the date of the Reed Trophy. That's the date of the McGregor Trophy. That's the date of this. That's the date of that. So you know, okay, avoid those dates in your diary. Try yeah. and find gaps. So you know that the champion, the champions, for example. So for those who want to wear what the champion, the champions is, all the golf courses in, in, in England will have a county championship, men's championship, senior championship, ladies championship, junior championship. And then they have a champion, the champions, whereby the champion of Oxfordshire, the champion of Leicestershire, the champion of Lancashire, the champion of Cheshire, whatever, will then go to Woodall Spa and play in the champion of champions event. That, generally speaking, is on a weekend, normally the second week in September. So if you are trying to get the best players in your to play in your event, then if you pick that weekend, then you are, you might lose your very best player. Yeah. You might only lose yeah. one, one, two or three, depending on how many different age categories go to that champion championship and, and obviously i'm talking about the junior here he may well win the men's championship so he may well be the men's champion playing in that event as well you see so so you obviously have to bear that in mind and there are inevitable clashes whereby look if you're only losing one player and you've got a field of 80 90 playing in your grandfather then you can you can turn around and go okay i can cope without you know with, with missing one you know if you if suddenly there's 15 20 who are going to be playing in another grand final elsewhere then you think to yourself no, I, I need to find a different date. So let me ask you this then, Steve. Right, so so far we've covered off, we're going to work backwards. We're going to start with a grand final. So to organise a junior golf tour from scratch, first thing you need to do is work backwards. So we figure out when we want the grand final to be. Then once we've done that, we look at the dates when the big tournaments are on. You know, no no disrespect, but, you know, the big, big, big events are on. And then we just avoid those dates for our scheduled tournament events. Then... You've got to approach the clubs, haven't you? And try and secure those. It's now. How easy is that? I mean, what do you do? Do you draw up a list? Let's say um, you, the Shires Junior Golf Tour, you're involved in that, aren't you? Yes. That, that's Warwickshire, am I right in saying? No, that's so, so that is Leicestershire, right, right. Northamptonshire, Bedfordshire, and, and yes, you're right, Warwickshire as well. So four counties. So we've got so a choice four of. Four counties, of, roughly middle of the way. Four counties, yes. So do you have a list of clubs that you want to go to, or do you have a list of clubs that? um we've been to before so we want to go back to these 
or do you try and go to different ones each time or is it a case of look we've been at these clubs for a long time we've got a good relationship let's stick with these ones or is it a bit like formula one for example where every year or every couple of years they'll try and chuck a few different tracks in do you know what i mean do you, is that what you try and do or do you just stick to the same we've got a relationship at this club let's stay with this club they've supported us for years we're going to stick around we know it's going to be an easy negotiation to try and get the day that we want or let's mix it up what what's your route for that so it's a good point and, and actually use the example there of formula one well the last event of the formula one season now is abu dhabi yeah. Whereas in years gone by, it was it Brazil, could be, it? It, Japan. It and, yeah. It could, yeah, yeah, exactly. You see, so they have changed it around, and that's what you have to think of: is is that what's the best way of going about it? So you use the example there, the Shire Junior Golf Tour. That's one whereby we've got four counties to choose from. So I I think to myself, well, let's give each one of those counties the opportunity to yeah. host the grand there's, final. There's no shortage week. of clubs, then, is there? You know, no, that's it. Four and, counties, you're going to have hundreds of clubs to choose from. <laughs> that's it. And also, if you if you go down the lines of Let's do one. This, let's do this year. So this year, for example, was in Leicestershire. Last year's grand final was in Northamptonshire. So in theory, let's go along the lines of well, let's go to Bedfordshire next year and have the grand final. Let's the following year they go to Warwickshire. So therefore, you're only really having to go back to them to say, you know, it's a big event. You're going to hold it. You only have to go back there every four years. So so I'll, I'll flip it the other way around though. In Warwickshire, obviously, it's just one county I'm looking at. And because generally speaking, it's the same day every year, I know there are only certain clubs which are going to be able to hold that final. And this yeah. year, and actually it's just been confirmed this morning, this year's final took place at Stratford on Avon Golf Club. They have confirmed that they are happy and willing and able to host it again next year. So it was a but, really successful event. Do you event want that this year. though? Is that the grand final? Do you, do you want, I mean, Stratford upon it, a lovely, by the way, great course. Um, but do you want them to just host a regular event because they've had the grand final now? Is it? It's a bit like the World Cup, isn't it? We don't have it in the same venue every four years. You know, yes. it moves around. Yeah. For, for for next year, I've decided that I am going to go back there, but I don't think I would go back there for a third consecutive year. I think I would try and spread it around. But for next year, because they don't actually host another Junior Open, so they don't hold another competition during the year. So it's, 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 if you like, it's their opportunity to hold a Junior Open. And they were happy, willing and able to come back to me and say, yes, we love the fact that it was coming to our venue and, and, and we want it there. So so you have to make those decisions, you know, sometimes, you know, and, and there's no right or wrong way of doing about it. You know, if you want to go to different venues every year, go for it. You know, if you want to go to the same venue every year, you know, um, you know, the FA Cup final is always held at Wembley. We know that, you know, yeah. and people go, wow, I want to go to play in the FA Cup final because I remember that person picking up that trophy or whatever at that golf course. And if you've got a venue which is stunning, you know, Woodall Spa, we mentioned there for the Champion of Champions. Yeah. It's always held there. It's the home of England golf. It's one whereby you know you have to play well. You know, the Faldo Series this year is in the UAE. They've got the DP World Tour Grand Final the same yeah. week. So they did the same thing. You know, so there, there's always that whereby you can go back to the same venue or you can change it around. It's, it's, um, it can work both, both ways. Do That's you the then, question. Steve, seek? the advice because you've also got a database of all of the the kids who have entered each year and you know a lot of them will be eligible to play the next year and the next year so do you seek um recommendations from parents do you go out and ask them you know are, are you would you like us to di go to different venues do you do like polls surveys to the parents at the end of each season what did you make it at all would you like us to go to different venues were you happy with a grand final venue because they're, they're the ones essentially who are paying for this aren't they it's the parents and I know the kids are playing, the golf course is amazing, but I assume they charge you. We'll, we'll touch on that in a bit. Um, but it's the parents who are putting their kids forward and, and the money's coming from the parents. So do you seek their advice or do you just think, no, hang on, we know what we're doing. We are the experts. Leave us and trust us to do it. Because, because they, again, there's no right or wrong because um, the parents might say, well, come to this course because it's two miles from my house <laughs> you know what I mean? so their opinion might be a little bit biased whereas you know you are the expert so is it a case of we will do what we know is best for the kids to play the best, most competitive golf and make it a challenge for them to help them grow um or is it a case of well, what do the parents think what what do you do both or, or I mean, both. You, you, yeah. both you have to i mean you, you have to take into consideration what their thoughts are you know you in some respects, you look at their faces when they come off the golf course, you know, and if you've got a lot of glum faces, you know, and you think to yourself, 
why was that the case? You know, the whole idea was the fact that it was a celebration, then an opportunity to play a really nice golf course. But it could be a really tough golf course, you know, and it could be, yeah. a, you know, it could be a really difficult day weather-wise. We will come to that a little bit later on, by the way. Yeah, we will. Um, is... So it might well be a day whereby it's almost completely out of your control. You know, the, the, the weather or, or, the, or the, you know, the, the roof might have been, you know, they might have cut it for a little while, you know, and you just think to yourself, is this a venue which is set up for junior golf for them to have a, a, a really, you know, and you have to balance it's a grand final after all so you want to make it a challenge you don't yeah. want people coming in with you know 25 under par or something like that or do you you know we've just seen an event on the ladies european tour whereby the three rounds the winning score was 61 61 65 yeah. is that golf is that what you want to see you know you know it, it looks great on the you know the record score you know it didn't drop a single shot the entire three rounds but at the same time is that a challenge is that what you want from your grand final you want a grand final winner We'll come to prizes as well. But the grand final we had on the Shire Junior Golf Tour, the winning prize was a round of golf with Charlie Hull. Yeah. So it's a round of golf. You know, so you obviously you want the best player to go out there and earn that opportunity to win that prize, you see. So, so, but at the same time, you as an organiser, you've got a pretty good idea about what courses are set up better for juniors, you know, which venues are set up for better juniors. You mentioned a little earlier as well about the members of golf clubs. How, how do they react when you have a a mass load of juniors suddenly turn up at their golf course. So you need to make sure that it's a venue which is junior friendly, you know. So you seek this advice, you know, you there are certain venues whereby you, you know if during the course of the year you have, I don't know, let's say 100, 150 kids playing in, in Warwickshire, for example. You know, we had about 150 kids playing in junior open, junior qualifying events throughout the entire year. If your grand final is at a venue where there isn't a single junior who's played in any of those events. You've got to ask the question, why is that the case? Yeah. Why have they not got any junior members at their golf club? It could be because they, they don't have any members of the golf club. So say, for example, off the top of my head, and this is not picking on anyone, someone like the Belfry. They are they are aimed at the elite. They, they're aimed at corporate yeah. golf. They're not necessarily they're, trying they're to get more They're a resort venue, aren't they? A little bit different, the Belfry. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, so the, 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 you know, like I say, I'm not picking on them, but there wasn't, there wasn't that many junior golfers from the from the Belfry who played in, the, in, in any of the junior events this year in Warwickshire. But at the same time, it's the Belfry. So yeah. wouldn't you love to have a grand final at the, at the Belfry? Wouldn't the kids love to go and play on the Brabbers Inn at the Belfry? You know, so, so it's, it's a balancing act of, of trying to find what you think is best, what the kids think is best, what the club think is best. But then, well. Steve, this brings me to my next point. And I hope you don't mind me sort of asking you all these questions, but we are here to talk about a grand final Absolutely. and how to run one. Um, money because the belfry i imagine wouldn't be cheap and no. we would like to think that clubs would say oh it's junior we're going to grow the game have a day on us you know doesn't work like that they're a business at the end of the day you know and we get that and we want we need golf clubs to make money in order to stick around so we can carry on playing golf it's um you know I, I, golf clubs aren't money grabbers but they need to continue to operate we want them to continue we need them to make money and in order to do that, they're going to have to charge you to do that. Um, how does that sort of negotiation go, Steve, with a club? Do you have to pay for the tee slots? Do you, uh, I mean, because they're juniors, I assume if it's a grand final, the field number is perhaps a bit smaller. Um, so you don't need a full day's tee slots. But then again, if you're getting into October, days are getting shorter you know, perhaps you are going to take up most of the tea, tea slots. How do the clubs respond to that? And I don't want figures, but how do they sort of go about charging you? Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose the, the thing you have to bear in mind is it, it's a grand final, so you can charge the kids a little more to play in the grand final as opposed to a normal junior competition. Not yeah, junior and we must say so as well, just, just before we get in that, we need you guys organising the tools to make money as well so we can continue doing it as well do you know what i mean there needs to be a balance where it's fair on the kids um it's fair on you guys it, look, it's like anything if you're organizing the tour you need to get paid for it but we need the club to get paid as well so we can carry on playing golf so two yeah. people need to get paid essentially and it's going to be the parents paying for it sorry sorry yeah, guys, well, actually, three people <laughs> three people need to be paid we need to be paid the club needs to be paid but also the the players need to be paid because the prize funds need to be bigger and better for that grand final than any other event during the year. So obviously so you, you can't have to... a prize fund for juniors though, can you? Uh, an actual physical 
monetary. Well, the, well, the problem, as I mentioned with the show, is the prize is the is around the goal yeah. for Charlie Hill. So the prize, but it, but it still needs to be it needs to be a better prize than any other event yeah. you have during the year. You see, so so my point with that is, is the fact you can raise the the green fee that you're going to charge them to play in the grand final on the basis that okay, you might not give more money, but you might be able to give it to more players. So so instead of the top three, you might be able to give it to the top five, or you might be able to give yeah. it to gross and net, or do a different division. So all this has to come into the factor when you are negotiating with the club. Okay, you mentioned there, don't me- don't go into the details of exactly how much a club well, you charges. Can, if that. you want to, if you can. <laughs> I well, don't mind. I just... <laughs> well, I won't, I won't name club, shall we say, but there was one golf club whereby I went to them and said, would you be interested in hosting a junior event? Actually, this wasn't a grand final. This was an event in April, early April, yeah. and they charged me £52 for the green fee for the juniors. Okay. Which is which is which is more than double what we would charge the juniors to play in the event. Right. So that that's a question because you say fifty two pounds. Now, obviously, I'm involved in men's tours, yeah. um, and fifty two pounds. The players pay more considerably more <laughs> to play yes. in some of these events. So that would actually yeah. be a really good deal for the exactly. tour. Exactly. <laughs> you know. So, and, so I'm assuming that, that's, that's not a good deal for you, though. Well, well, well exactly. I mean, straight away, I'm, I, we're at a loss because obviously we can't charge fifty-two pounds for a junior. Yeah. To play. Well, we can't. We shouldn't. And and and, and no, me no. as the junior no. organizer, so what, we what shouldn't be charging charge? kids. What do we charge? I would say less than half of that. Okay. So let's go so on a the, figure of roughly twenty-five pounds. So that's in it. order to yes. make it work. You need the club realistically because you need to get paid out of this. Um, you need to generate time. There, there, there's there's infrastructure as well to pay for, isn't there? That you know you've yeah. got to pay um, your scoreboard. So for example, I don't know who you use, but Blue Golf or Golf Genius or whatever, it's not free to use their leaderboard. You've got to pay them for the software. You've got to pay for there's infrastructure to pay for. Um, so food. let's say you charge. Yeah, there's food. So let's say you you're charging twenty five pounds or. That's 20, 20 pounds or something. If a club then comes to you and says, okay, well, you're charging 25 pounds, we'll let you have it for 20 pounds. That leaves you five pounds to pay for all your infrastructure per player and your food. That's not going to cut it. You need the club basically a tenner, <laughs> isn't it, really? Yes. You know? Yeah, exactly. And imagine that's and quite, they're trying to charge you 52 quid. You go, well, my ceiling's 10 pounds. They... <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's where, that's where you come in, Ian. That's yeah. where we bring in someone from the media and we say, okay. And, and also you, you, you play a little, you have to, you, you, you say to them, look, this is for junior golf. We're not here to make money. How on earth can we make money when we're charging £25? Exactly. And, and, you know, yeah. So no one, no one, I'm stretching it. Very, very few people involved in junior golf make money out of junior golf. Yeah. You know, so, so therefore... It's, it's not a to, profit thing, to, is it? it it's not no. a profit thing. It's, it's a longer term thing, I think, with this. There might be a small bit of leftover... You know, we're talking petty cash money, aren't we? Like, if you, we are talking entry fees of twenty to twenty-five pounds. Yeah. You know, and then you've got to pay green fees out. You've got to pay green fees out of that to get them on the course and food and prizes. You know, you're not going to be rocking up in a Bentley. <laughs> no. Event, you know, no, absolutely not. You see, so, so, so these are the things we should. But you then say to them, okay, so a, you're going to be out there. You're going to be promoting junior golf. We're going to be pushing to try and get more juniors yeah. into the game. So, so you would hope that clubs would accept that and go, yes, we want to be part of that. Then we turn around to you, Ian, the media, and we say, right, we're going to get some media coverage for you. This is going to be positive coverage for you. This is going to be something which is going to get your name out there to say you are helping the game of golf. You are helping develop the game of golf. So we will give you free media publicity. You as a media company, for those people who are uh, another. Generally speaking, we don't pay media companies to come across. I know you get paid a fee for covering them, doing the video yeah. coverage and things like that. But, you know, we can send an article off to, to newspapers, magazines, internet companies, things like that. Generally, media coverage is, is, is free to get, kind of thing. So as long as you do it properly. Um, so therefore, that's what we can turn around to the club and say, look, we're going to give you some proper positive media coverage. But all you need to do in return is be a bit kinder on the green fees, you know, be a bit more accepting the fact that you are going to make a loss on this. And that's a, that's a difficult sell. You know, you have to be a good salesman to turn can, around to the club and I say. say though, if clubs are savvy, Steve, they shouldn't make a loss. And if there are any clubs watching this, I'm not teaching anybody to suck eggs or how to run a business or anything like that, because I imagine a lot of clubs do this. One club who do this very well is Dunstanborough Castle, as we know um, from Fowler Series. They've hosted the the North, North uh, East 
Faldo series for a couple of years. Now, what they do, and this is a way that clubs can do it, they actually give their tea slots, and it's over three days as well, for free. With the practice day as well, for really. With the practice yeah. day, for free. Okay, they don't pay for it. Faldo series don't pay for those tea slots. However, the deal is, is that Dunstanborough can sell sponsorship per hole. Okay, so what they do, they charge, I don't know what they charge, let's call it 200 quid, for example, to local businesses to sponsor a hole. Now, there's 18 holes, 18 times two is 3,600 pounds. That's quite a lot of money, All right? Yeah. That's a good deal. They don't stop there, though, because Dunstable are a very social club. They then run their own hog roast and they do it, you know, uh, and then they do drinks at like a pound off, do you know, it's stuff like this. So you actually end up spending a fortune when you're there and they get it just right because their bar takings, they might take a hit on green fees, but their bar takings are doubled for the day or quadrupled for the day. So where they take the hit on the green fees, they make that back and then profit on the whole sponsorship. And then instead of taking a thousand pounds through the bar that day, they take 4,000 pounds through the bar. So actually Dunstanborough make a fortune from hosting junior events. That is the way to do it if you're a club. Now, yes, it takes a bit of time. It takes a little bit of management. However, you're getting people into the club that have never been to your club before. Now, if you're sensible as well, you get people going around saying, what do you think of our club? Look, can we get your email address just to invite you down for a free round or, or a free um, nine holes of golf? And then you get them in and they play their free nine holes. And then of the 50 people who have come played, if two sign up, brilliant. Do you know what I mean? That is how you market. That is how you do it. And then it doesn't cost the the, the junior tour any money whatsoever. Um, but you can ma maximize it as a golf club. And, and that, for me, is the model of how to do it if you know, you're prepared to put the effort in. And also, if you work with the right junior organizer, the junior tours, they're, they're accepting of that. If, if a club is willing yeah. to host your grand final, they'll turn around to that club and say, we have no issue whatsoever with you putting leaflets out there and promoting your golf club to these juniors. You know, with, with, within reason, you don't want juniors turning up and going, I want to join this golf club, you know, and it almost feel like a bit of a poaching episode, you know, you know, from the, from the host club to try and poach juniors from other clubs. But at the same time, it is a way of them saying, you know, this is a golf club you want to come and play. This is the kind of welcome yeah. you've got. And you mentioned there about making money through the bar. Let me tell you that the, the three grand finals that we've held in Warwickshire, we've been at Coventry Golf Club, the last three, Coventry Golf Club, Handsworth Golf Club, and Stratford on Avon. And all three of those, I've spoken to the bar staff afterwards, and they, all three of them to a man, have said, this is the busiest clubhouse we I have understand. seen for a long time. Because don't forget, you don't just have 50, 60 kids. Guess what? You have 50, 60 parents as well. So you suddenly have it, you know, and, and it might not just be the mum, it might be the mum and the dad, and it could even be the sister as well. Listen, you've got, whatever, you've the, got the these parents on your venue for at least five hours, at least, probably yes. longer. They will spend money. They yes. will. They are not yes. going to sit there for five hours and not even, even if it's just £10, yes. you know. But that one person who spends £10, the next person will spend £50, and then the other person will spend £30, and there'll be somebody who'll spend £100, and then there's somebody who will spend £5. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then you've got the club shop. Why, yes. why not do it? Why not just do a run a 10% discount day or something? You know, get rid of all the stock that sat there doing nothing. Get rid of it. Just get rid of it. 10% is nothing at the end of the day. You know, 50 quid shirt goes down to 45 pounds. Well, you're still, you're protecting a margin. You're still going to have a margin in that, aren't you? And probably a good one. So why not just do these things? And uh, Faldo series is another great one as well, because it's prestigious Faldo series. And this is where Dunstable get it right, because... And I'm not talking about poaching juniors when I talk about inviting the, I'm talking about invite the parents down to play nine holes, not the juniors. You invite the parents down. But it's the people in the local area. You know, you go into the local town and you say, we've got a Faldo, even if it's grand final, or if it was not grand final, let's say it's just a regular event. Um, we've got the grand final. We've got the best kids in the world, the best junior golfers in the United Kingdom and arguably the world coming to our venue. Come down to the club. Let's make it a massive open day on the final day. If you've never been before, come down. We'll get all of our, you know, get all your coaches in. Just let the parents just knock a few balls on the range, completely free of charge. 
but in the local area, come down, try golf, give it a go. You've never played golf before, why not? Come down, knock a few balls on the range, completely free of charge, get the coaches there, get them to get the names, invite them back down for some lessons, see where it goes. And I can guarantee, guarantee, if you do it properly, you will make a fortune, not just in the short term, but you'll sign people up for the long term as well. That is how you do it. That's for from a club side of thing. That's how you do it. And I get it takes time and manpower, but if you're prepared to put the effort in, you will reap the rewards. And it comes down to, like you said earlier, about selecting your venues, of, of, of yeah. not just picking the venue which is good for golfers, but also the ones which have got a little bit of foresight, the ones who realise, actually, we can gain out of this. You know, And, that's, and, I, that, named, that... and I named Dunstan Breath for a reason, because I know Stuart won't mind me saying, Stuart um, Imsen up there, very forward thinking, gets it. He just gets it. He knows what he's doing. And it's not just about, oh, all right, I need to make a green fee. It's about the additional revenue that comes in. Because you look at a golf club, nine times out of 10, they've got a shop, they've got a bar, and then they've got green fees, and then they've got a PGA Pro for lessons. So you've actually got four revenues of income. Somebody who comes into your club to play around a the golf, they're paying the green fees. They're probably going to pay at the bar as well. They might buy something from the shop. Well, I'll tell you something, everybody who's coming through to play a round of golf should be spending three times <laughs> at your golf club. <laughs> you know? Who doesn't have a but, pint after a round of golf? Yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> well, not right, no, junior. I, yes, of course, yeah. Now, actually, you mentioned drink there as well. Food as well, which 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 does come... That's also something whereby do you make that part of the package as, as when you are organising the grand final? Well, do you have my to, way of thinking. Because well, I, I, I would that, say yes, but I don't know. Well, my way of thinking is, is two two ways. One, because you know you want to make a full day of it. If they've just played a round of golf, then food really needs to be part of it because if they've, they've spent four, yeah. five, six hours there already, give them food as part of it. As a regular event during the year, that doesn't necessarily form part of the package for a regular event, but for the grand final, it does. Also, it kills time. Because if you've got a gap between that last that first group coming in and that last yeah. group coming in, it could be two, three hours. So therefore, you know you've got the opportunity whereby sit them down, have them to eat, chill out, get them the opportunity to chill out in the sense that it kills a little bit of time, it means they're sat around the clubhouse, it means the parents might want yeah. something to eat, so therefore the club can get some extra revenue through selling the food or drink to them, you see. So, but it gives you the opportunity then to stick around and then you can do the prize presentation to everyone hopefully if they can all stick around and that's something which i'm pretty quite proud of the events that we have done is the vast majority of the players have stuck around for presentations yeah you've been you've been in these events before ian both adult junior whereby how many people really stick around for that presentation at the end i won't, I won't name the event but i remember doing one event and um clubhouse was pretty much empty yes. and i'll never forget it you know 20 minutes after the the event had finished me and my cameraman were the only people in the clubhouse yeah and, exactly. and it was it was a shame you know and that's not I, I actually put that on the club not 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 the event because they, they'd done the presentation and the presentation was half empty anyway but they'd done the presentation but i couldn't believe it it was a it was a beautiful sunny day and me and leon my cameraman we were the only two in the clubhouse you know and they were like well what do we do now yeah. <laughs> let's have a sandwich and just go i guess you know yeah so this comes on as well to, to 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 what what incentives do you need to give the kids the parents to stick around prizes is it that's the one whereby yeah, if you so i i make sure that with my grand finals every player gets a prize so you can go down the lines i've done it before whereby you give them the prize before they go out so for example you might give them a ball or a bottle of water or something like that before they go out but i tend to give it to them when they come back in their reward is for completing the round of golf handing in the scorecard then they get the prize at the end and i've done it slightly differently i don't know anyone who else who does this but it to me it works to perfection and that's that i do a calendar of photos of each individual I golfer like that well you're Start a photographer the... steve as well we must say if anybody doesn't exactly. know steve you are a photographer so you've got the means to do that haven't you yes so i get but so therefore i do an individual calendar i of love every that that's player. a really good idea this year in Warwickshire, we got Andy Sullivan to sign all of them. Oh, so we brilliant. got a tour pro to yeah. sign all of them. So not only did, so last year I gave them a calendar, this year I gave them a signed calendar. So even, and that's another thing which we probably need to come to, how do you make it better the following year? And that was my way of making it better for the following year is that right, not only do you get a calendar, because obviously the, by then they, they had an idea that they were probably going to get their calendar. Now they got it signed by Andy Sullivan, you see what I mean? So, yeah. so it's just ways, but it's a calendar whereby you, you've got slots on 
whereby you can put the dates for the next year. Brilliant. So the yeah. thinking is that the next year it goes up on their wall and they can write in where the events are next year. So it kind of like self promotes itself yeah. straight away. Every day that they look at calendar and they go, I think of, you know, yeah. so both of the Shire Junior Golf Tour and the Warwickshire the Junior would have it as well. Very clever. Absolutely. <laughs> Simple. You know, and and also and, and when we're talking about making money here, and, and this is this is not one of the reasons why I did it. The main reason was was the kids' faces when I gave it to them. But those parents love the calendar. So I had so many reorders of that calendar because they make great Christmas presents. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. you know, just from a purely person, well, from a purely business Every aunt, view, uncle, grandparent, nephew, niece has got that calendar. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You see, so so I made some money back on the back of, yeah. you know, it cost me, I, I don't know how much it cost me, but it, it obviously, you know, we were talking about that £25, which, yeah. is, which is a pretty good starting point of how much yeah. we charge suddenly a fair percentage of that is going to the green fee for the golf club a yeah. fair percentage of it is going to the food to the golf club and a fair percentage of it is now is going towards those prizes for every single player in that event yeah i'm already making a loss i was going to say event. you're going to be over 25 pounds you know exactly. that's if that's what you charge so you need to find a way to recoup that and that's one way to to recoup some of that cost because we don't we can't have you making a loss do you know what i no. mean because you can't keep doing it where it's like, well, I'm going to do another year of junior golf and give these juniors an opportunity to play. But you need to, at worst, break even. But they, even then, if you break even, you're like, I'm putting a lot of time and effort into this. So like, we don't go to work for free, do we? Like, imagine your company said to you, oh, by the way, Steve, you, if you can come, turn up this week, like anybody watching this, you, you're employed. You go to your job and let's say they say, look, do you mind if we just don't pay you this week? You'd be a bit like, no i've got a problem with that um yeah. i'm not coming in <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so so if you're not gonna pay me i'm not coming in um and and i know you do it for the love of it but equally it can't be costing you money either because no. there is i don't think people well people probably do realize but there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes and it's not just oh we've got five tournaments on this year so it's just five days of work oh no 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 <laughs> Oh, no, no. You're probably giving up, what, at least a month of your year solely to focus on this, you know? Yeah. And also, what about trophies as well? Because obviously, the, yeah. that's, a prize, that's a prize for everyone. You still need to give prizes for that grand final to say, you know, who finished first, second, third. So we still need trophies as well. So that's that's another cost on top. And obviously, that's one whereby... Um, well, should it, we look don't. at prizes? Because we've got a picture of Freddie McCart. Can I show this? Not yes, by all means, yeah. So these are the events from the Faldo series. So they 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 had their grand that trophy. Final. That won't be cheap, will it? No, exactly. You know, and and you can go down the line so you can try and go with the glass trophies and things like that. I know the Faldo series, so the Faldo series, obviously, as you see, um, the British Junior Golf Tour as well. They they've made a big deal of the fact that they get really nice trophies. They basically want the, their thinking is the fact that when they're sat on the trophy on the on the mantelpiece at home they want their trophies to look better than anyone else's and i kind of get that and and they're right kind of thing my personal point of view is is i just want the kids to to you know to to enjoy their day and and and, and if they have something at the end of it then then great kind of thing a, a trophy is important steve because you you win you win a trophy yes well every sport's the same it doesn't matter what sport it is if you win you win a formula one race you win a trophy you win a you win a fa cup final you win a trophy you know i also i wonder as well because a lot of a lot of events as well they say but you can't take the trophy home with you i wonder with other sports whether they're whether 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 um lewis hamilton or max verstappen is allowed to take home those trophies which they pick no, up i them. know i know for a fact um they're not um they don't give it back but it, the team keeps the trophies right so for example like red bull uh, max verstappen's won pretty much every race this season yeah uh, he obviously gets the winner's trophy, but all of the official trophies that Red Bull win, because it's a team sport, they go back to Milton Keynes in the factory. Now, a lot of drivers then get replicas made yes. if it's a particularly, like Lewis Hamilton won, won, won his first British Grand Prix, yeah. you know, got a replica made of that British, but it's not the original original. Yeah. The originals are kept by, I mean, there's enough money in Formula One that they can, yeah. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? Not, like, yeah, Formula but, One to Junior Golf is slightly different. I mean, it's like we, we don't quite have the same amount of money as Formula One, so yeah. But, but it's the same, it's the same in, in football. Yeah. The FA Cup, the original FA Cup, they don't get to keep it. No. They get replicas, yeah. but they don't get to keep the original. Same World Cup, you don't keep the World Cup. No. no one keeps the World Cup. However, I think um, if you win 
if you win the World Cup four times, you actually keep the official World Cup and then they have another one made. Yeah. Um, it's it's things like that, isn't it? But golf, of course, the green jacket. Yes. Jacket, isn't it? I mean, really, if you think about a green jacket, the monetary value of that, 100 quid. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it means so much more. But it's but it's actually priceless, yes. isn't it? For, for Augusta National to get that green jacket, under quid maybe actually you know, just uh, just on that point as well with the with the warwickshire we, we, we hold a joint order of merit actually this is a point we need to make as well so the grand finals well the way i do that is i run an order of merit during the year and that finishes before the grand final and the grand final is a standalone event and the beauty about doing that is, is it means you can give all the order of merit prizes out at the grand final and then at least you know who's won them so yeah. therefore you can get them you can get their names put on the trophies you can get their names put on whatever I actually did shirts with them with their names on the shirts. So oh, Order of Merit cool. winner on the shirt with their name on, you see. So therefore, that was something personal to them for winning the Order of Merit kind of thing. Same with the Shires as well. We did a very similar thing. The, the other way of doing it, and if I'm off the top of my head, I don't know if other tours which do it. I think some counties do it, whereby they use the grand final as part of the Order of Merit. Now, that's all well and good, but you could have a situation going into that grand final whereby only, you know, of the, of the 30, 40 players in the grand final, Perhaps only four or five of them can actually win the order of merit. So, yeah. what's the point of being in that grand final? Yeah, you know. Yeah, but but there are different ways of doing. It. There's no right or wrong way. That's just the way that I would prefer to do it as far as as far as the prizes are concerned with the grand final. Right. Other things as well, which we which we which we do need to talk about. We've covered a lot already. But things, the helpers you need on the day, because it's all well and good me yeah. saying I'm going to run this event. You know, we, we've, we've been to a fairly serious event whereby they're very good in the sense that they've got, you know, they've got some stewards out there. But generally speaking, it's, it's only two or three of them who, who tend to run the events. And that's older kids. Yeah. So that you, you think that they should be able to look after themselves. But what about when you have younger kids? You need helpers out there. And that's something which you need to get sorted beforehand because you need to have in advance who's going to be out there, who's going to be looking after certain things. Yeah. Because the so imagine if they there. don't turn up, Steve, then you've got no tournament you can't run it can you certainly you were set um safeguarding and things like that for juniors yes and also you need to have trusted people as well because you know by then you know most of the parents you know most of the kids so you've got a pretty good idea who's going to be playing in your event um but you also need to be aware of who needs a little bit more help than others shall we say and you yeah. know where i'm coming from when i say those types of things there are there are, there are kids and parents out there who are easier to deal with than others so, um, you know, and, and you have to tailor that, you know, even with us, whether that's sorting out your tea times, you know, you, you, you know, if you know that there's two kids who don't get on with each other, then for God's sake, don't put them out next to each other in the same <laughs> three ball, you know, yeah. or, or, or vice versa. You know, if, if you have two really good friends, be aware that if you do put them together, it could be a wonderful round of golf for them, but they might be chatting all the way around and kind of forget speed of play yeah. and things like that. You see. So you need to you need to balance it off in the sense of, you know, some things can work for you some things can work against you kind of thing so so who who do you ask to help then steve do you ask for members at the club yeah so you would yes help? yeah so in particular with the starter so if you can get someone from the club the home club who knows the golf course, i would love to do that you can stand if anybody yeah anybody around berkshire wants me to be a starter for you i'll come and do it <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it is a specialized position in the sense of you know you want someone with a bit of personality someone who who's not just going to stand there and go yeah, yeah, first tee. You know, you want someone who's going to stand on the first tee, and on the first tee for the shyest junior golf tour grand final, representing you know whatever golf club is. You know, and we had that, and we and with the with the Warwickshire Junior Order Merit, we had home club members who knew the golf course, so who knew, you know, on the 14th hole we've got ground under repair on the right hand side. So if you go on the, you know, so think you know things which you just need that information whereby at least they can talk from knowledge, you know. I play yeah. generally speaking i tend to play the the golf course so therefore i know what i'm dealing with you know so yeah. so I'm, I'm aware of some of those issues which may crop up but you have to have that in place before you even get there you see so and also you need you know if it's for the county for, for, for the warwickshire junior order merit you need to make sure that you have people from the represent from the county who might be able to help out with the presentation afterwards because it's all well and good me steve jackson doing the presentation but it looks so much better if it's the president of the county. You know, it looks so much better from the club's point of view if they have a representative from the county. So they can, they can, you know, it's not just me saying thank you to the club for hosting it. It's someone high up, you know. So it's it's important that you have, you know, representation. And also if you have the club captain there, 
from their point of view, you want the club captain there to say, thanks very much for the kids for coming to our golf course. Thanks very much to the county for bringing it here. You know, so you need to balance it all up. You know, sometimes that can't happen. You know, as it, as it panned out this year with Stratford and Avon, both the club captain, the ladies captain, the, the club captain and the vice captain were all away. So we didn't have that county representative there, but we still had... Yeah. You know, I, I did the I did it on their behalf. If you sort of know, I I thanked the club and said, you know, but you need that. You need to at least offer that to the club and make sure that there are people there who can help with that with that regard. Yeah, definitely. No, no. Look, I, I think um, we often forget that too. You don't just send a load of kids out onto a golf course and you know, wait for them to come back in. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, well, well, you shot forty. What? Well yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right now, so obviously we've talked about beforehand. Now, what about on the day? Because you know, you get you can get all the preparation in beforehand. You think you're gonna have, you know, it's gonna run absolutely smoothly. Then what <laughs> happens on the day? And um, we're the gonna weather, see, Steve. Yes, <laughs> we, we, I know we've got some photos of of, of the Shires event uh, and and the and the Warwickshire Junior Order Merit event, which we might show just to just to explain how how. Um, if you start putting some of them, I'll explain some of the things. I'll, I'll cycle through as you, uh, yeah, if you talk yeah. through. So this is the Shires Junior Golf Tour event. So this is the nine-hole competition we have. Caelan Beveridge on the left-hand side here, he won the nine-hole Order of Merit. Actually didn't win a single event during the entire year, but won the Order of Merit. So there's a bit of a case study for you in the sense that you don't have to win all the events to win an Order of Merit, as long as you're very consistent. He then went on to win the grand final, and he... Um, will now have a, the opportunity to play a round of golf with Charlie Hill. And that's Harriet on the right-hand side there, who one of the more smiley characters of the entire year kind of thing, you know. So, so you know, lovely to, 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 to you know, they enjoyed their day. I don't know if you've got some more uh, other photos yeah. there. So, go, so that's a nine hole. That, that was the, so these are the 18 old competition. That's Liam, obviously with boys and girls here. So, so, and, and that's another thing as well. When you're doing the grand final, do you make it a mixed competition? Do you make it a boys and girls separate competition? So, and the shires does it mixed so therefore it's gross and net yeah. mixed and obviously with that you need to bear in mind that what happens if if uh, a girl might have you know might play off a, a scorecard which is the par might be too higher um so this is this is this actually wasn't the grand final this was one of the end of season events we were on we run a team competition as well so something slightly different whereby so we have leroy the the, the back, back left there who's a single figure handicapper golfer uh, in the middle there is, uh, oh, it's going to kill me now because I forgot his name. But on the right hand side is oh. Josh, but you have a high handicapper and a medium handicapper. So, therefore, an opportunity there to do something a little bit different with one of your end of season events in the sense of trying to get a bit more of a team spirit. Um, might have another event, another photo from the from Shires. I can't remember what it's Yeah, we've got, uh, uh, yeah, got this. So, one. talking about scoring here, so I said, said earlier about the fact that it was a mixed competition. The girl on the left, on the right hand side there, a girl called Georgia Monday, she came in with a net fifty seven to win the grand wow. final. So wow. you know, and, and good luck to her. You know, the, the, there's no fault of, attached to her in the sense she just played exceptionally well in the day, kind of thing. But that's obviously something whereby a venue whereby scoring was very good. So you knew that you probably had more players coming off the golf course. I, I, sorry, just makes me sorry. The man on the left hand side, his face there. Is, it's the look of a face of someone who, yes, really, net fifty-seven. <laughs> but no, we've got one more. We've got one more picture. We've got one more picture there. One yet, oh, okay. So now the interesting cool. one about this one is, is this was an event for a mini tour event. So this is one whereby we send the kids off in the grand final, playing off forward tees. So, so golf was really. So why the one on the right hand side there? I think he's only five or six years old, kind of thing. So you want to give them the experience of playing in a grand final, even though realistically you know they're not good enough to is that if you follow my logic there in the sense of, but you want them to feel the the opportunity to be part of a big event so in warwickshire for example we organize a, a nine hole grand final as well and we invite anyone who played in any nine hole competition throughout the year to play in that grand final so it's just ways of whereby giving the opportunity to play in the big event uh, i think that's all the events from the from the from the shires there um yeah we might, is, have, yeah. might have some photos from the warwickshire junior order merit grand final as well we do, oh, yes. yeah. so yeah so so once again here the lad on the left hand side is a lad called george cornell he won the grand final so his prize so once so, so we said with the shires the uh, prize was around the golf with charlie hill his prize and actually it will be on friday this week he gets the opportunity to play around the golf with fliss johnson 
Ladies European Tour Press. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Gardner there on the right hand side. And you might remember Josh was mentioned in the news earlier. He's a player who's playing in the Daily Telegraph Grand Final. Now he won the gross category in this, but because he's playing in that grand final, he can't play with Fliss uh, later this week. But when I'm saying about the grand final, so we mentioned earlier with the Shires, whereby you had a six-year-old playing in it, and, and with the Warwickshire, we had nine old players playing in it. Josh is a plus two handicapper. So you still have to cater for those golfers who are seriously, seriously good golfers. Yeah. So you obviously have to try and find venues and try and find an event and, and, and the way that you tailor an event, whereby it does cater for those players who are very good. But at the same time, the younger players, the ones who want, you know, the higher handicapper still feel at home in those types of finals there. Yeah. Girls category there. Um, so two girls, actually, the, the, the girl on the right-hand side there is, is a, a girl called Arisha Virick. Her sister, Ariana Virick, has won and she has won the opportunity to play in the latest European Tour event. Nice. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it would have timed in with this, with this event. But as it's panned out, the... Uh, the invite was for later later on in the year, so therefore she could play in this event. But once again, same type of thing. You know, with someone who organises this grand final, one of the things I'm quite proud of is the fact that, generally speaking, the people the, when the invites went out, they all said yes, we want to play in it. And Ariana had the opportunity to play in the Ladies European Tour event. Now, what do you do? Do you turn around and say no, we want you to play in our grand final? Do you want to play in the Ladies European Tour event? Well, obviously, yeah. I was just delighted the fact that she had the opportunity to play in the Ladies European Tour event couldn't couldn't play to play in my event so once again you know you have to say you know we, we, we must be doing something right in the sense of you know she wants to play in our event yeah. my one more photo from that so we once again this more, is the, actually yeah we got the yeah, this so this is, the... is so this is the nine hole category so these are the ones who are the higher handicappers the ones who uh, i think the lad on the right hand side here i don't think he even had a handicap so it was a case of just giving them the opportunity to play in the event to give them the chance to to, to, to gain a handicap uh, um you say there's one more photo to come there it is yep and that's the girls once again um so uh amelia on the right hand side she won the nine hole quarter beat so she will have the opportunity to play with fliss on friday as well so giving the younger players as well the opportunity to play with a top top player so the interesting thing is that is ariana will be playing with fliss same with an, uh, another girl who plays off, I think, around about 30. And there you've got Amelia there, whose handicap is 54. So three players from completely different scales will have the opportunity to have a round of golf with a top player. You know, That'd these are the prizes. Yeah. So can't money money can't buy prizes kind of thing. And that's what you try and do at events kind of thing. So, But then after, Steve, as well, after Grand Final, after it's all been won, you've got to deliver on those prizes too. I mean, and yes. then, of course, you need those pros to have um, made sure that they're committed because they imagine Charlie Hall was quite difficult to pin down with the amount that she's playing and, and all, as we, all over the world. As, as we well know, because we did cover the the, yeah. the, the event that we, had, we we had for the winners from last year's uh, grand final. Yeah. And, and, and we will either be doing that at Globin <coughs> or at Sunningdale Golf Club. So obviously that's somewhere whereby you I'll need to negotiate. I'll do Sunningdale, stand the road from me. Let's go there. Exactly. Yes. Well, and, and it's and it's down the road from Charlie as well, as we well know, kind yeah. of thing. So, um, so yeah. So, but you're right in the sense of you know we talk as far as organising the grandfather before, during, and after. That's the after part. Yeah. You know, trying to make sure that when you give out those prizes, you know that that you you fulfil it. You know, you make sure that they they turn up. You make sure that the and and you know afterwards you need to get that information back out to the kids as well to say thanks very much for playing this event. Now we're moving up to next year. This is what we're going to be doing next year. So even now, I'm booking my events for next year, getting that grand final venue sorted yep. for next year, making it bigger and better for next year. So it's an ongoing process. So, you know, we mentioned earlier a little bit as well about how things can be affected on the day. We won't go into too many details because we don't want to like. <laughs> but the Faro series, they have their grand final. They've got a grand final coming up in the UAE, which are, which we'll, we will be covering on the podcast in in next month we'll do one on international golf but they had also an elite tour grand final we saw the photos early from that that had to be cut short by a day because it rained on the final day and they had to make that decision the decision you don't want to make do we play it or do we not is the course playable or not and it wasn't you know and, and yeah you know, and it, you, you, as someone who has organized these events it's, it's your worst moment you know you just think to yourself you know have i let everyone down you know and and, and inevitably there were some parents some players as well who were really disappointed some of them have come yeah. over from Ireland to play in that event but 
you know, as an organizer, there's, there's a point whereby you just have to say, um, unfortunately, you know, I'm going to be the bringer of bad news, you know, and, and you know, well, we, had it, Matthew, we had it with Faldo, didn't we, at uh, Scotland that time? There's just not a lot you can do. He had to, the safety of the children was the priority. Yeah, and, 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 and in Scotland it was fog. Um, so obviously you had yeah. the issue whereby, you know, guys and, and girls who can hit the ball 300 yards, you know, you can't hit shots into the fog and just hope that it doesn't hit anybody. Okay. And uh, uh, down in Bristol for the, for the event that they had, it was a case of it was a very hilly course and obviously, you know, wet under foot in the greens. But if someone fallen, slipped on one of those hills, you know, as we know with Johnny Bairstow, you know, broke broken leg, you can imagine, yeah. you know, that's, you know, they'd, they'd sue the Faldo series or, you know, all sorts of things could happen. Don't even go down there. You know, you have to look after the kids and make sure that safety comes into it. Um, but, yeah, so that's 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 running a grand final. It, it's not easy. Yeah. You know, there's a, a heck of a lot goes into organising it. But the one thing I will say, it is fantastically rewarding when, when you put the effort in, you do the day, it goes well. And you get the reaction of the kids and the parents and they come back to you and they say, thanks very much for organising that. We loved it. Yeah. And we want to come back more. We want to play in your events next year. And that's when you go, I'm doing something right here. You know, I'm doing something right. The club's doing something right. The county organisers are doing something right. The junior tours are doing something right. And you know that you're making a big effort and, you, and you're getting it right. And that's what, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that if, if there are people watching this, clubs, junior tours, junior counties, whatever, that's how you do it and that's why you do it brilliant steve very well said indeed um and and thank you to everybody for watching as well i hope that gives you a little bit more of an indication of what goes into it and the hard work that people like steve do i just turn up the camera and talk about it. <laughs> you do the real work <laughs> no but, but but we we all play a role you know and the media plays a role as well because we can all put on an event you know where whereby you know it could be but if no one knows about it, that's where the yeah. media comes in. And that's where we, as the organizer, we need to use the media as well to get it out there to people to say, you know, we, we can put on a great event and this is it kind of thing. And that's where we need the media to, to, to cover it. That's why the podcast is here. That's why, you know, to, yeah. to, to tell people about how how we do these types of things and why we do them. And, and um, yeah, it's 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 rewarding from, from everyone's point of view. Yeah. Well, Steve, but we will. Good news for everybody. We're back yes. in two weeks, right? Yes. Uh, the, so the next podcast, we're going to be covering girls' golf. We've got a meeting uh, tomorrow uh, with um, some girls, uh, England golf. They've got a regional meeting. It's going to be fascinating because there's, there's a former British Open winner who's going to be Ooh. at that meeting. Nice. Uh, so a major winner. So hopefully I'm going to have a chat with, with her. Um, and hopefully we'll get her on the podcast. Or if not, we'll get some people from that meeting. Yeah on the podcast and we'll start talking about girls golf possibly talk about girls golf rocks in particular because that's a, yeah. something which england golf i know is certainly pushing so it'd be, be good to do a little bit more i know we had did do girls golf last year but i think it's a subject which we probably need to cover again so we will be covering yeah. that we've got one on international golf which we will mention and then we've got another couple as well between now and the end of the year and then we'll have a break over Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Righty, hi, Steve. Um, well, I guess that wraps it up, and we'll see everybody in two weeks. Absolutely. Bye-bye. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot.